was Spot Bollock. Spot Bollock for Series 8. Well, you know, you've got to start off right. Oh, uh, that's very unprofessional. My phone's just gone off. I <laughs> didn't hear it, so your mic didn't pick it up. This is brilliant. Oh, well, this Imagine is what happens investing when... in new technology. Yes! Oh, listen to that clarity. Listen to that fidelity. Well, they would have already heard it if they listened to the end of last year. But... Yeah, that's very true. I can't remember when I got this and f- like from when, like which one was the first one. I think it might have been the very the top five of last year was the the first one, but then somehow off the back of that, greenlit for another season. <laughs> Amazingly, the people who pay us said that they wanted another series. Got yeah, they also said us to get back to our real jobs. But I mean, apart from that, I just took it as yeah, do what you want. It's a shame because my real job is actually making podcasts now, so that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you, you've you've smashed it. Now you've, well, now you're almost soon. You'll be having a new podcast as well. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, at some point. I don't know when. Some point in 2023. Hopefully, towards the start. <laughs> Fingers yeah. crossed. All being well. Um, unless I'm on a plane, which then Ooh. crashes, and then I'm stuck on a desert island. That's right. We're talking about Castaway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, of all of the episodes that we've done, I can't actually think of two shows that have been more perfectly put together. Apart from like when we did The Office US and The Office UK. No, but even still, there was a big quality gap between the two. Well, and I, I will say neither anything. which way it goes. All right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, obviously the theme is... is uh, ladies in a plane crash surviving on an island what which one do you want to start with uh i watched the wilds first so i guess that one okay so yellow jackets is all about <laughs> it's all about girls <laughs> on a plane <laughs> that crashes i wonder how long we could do that how long could we how long could we actually talk about both shows at the same time with the same sentence? Like, so there's an ongoing investigation after the fact of this plane crash and girls being stranded on on an island. Some of them we presume are well, some of them survive. We presume some of them are not alive, and we the the narrative flip flops between the two. Um, I, I don't know how much longer we can carry without actually... Yeah, oh, there's um, some keen sports people on each flight. <laughs> yeah. I guess the main difference is that Wilds has a lot more flashbacks, whereas the island stuff seems to be the flashbacks in Yellow Jacket. Yeah. Yeah, that that yeah. Sorry, I I see what you're saying. There, yeah, the the overarch the um the investigative angle of it. Once, presumably, the girls get off the, or at least one girl gets off the island. Although she does make reference to there being other survivors, so I think we can assume that you know she's not the only one that gets back. I mean, based on the end of the episode, I think it might be an investigation into something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I, I don't really want to start at the end, but I think we're gonna now. But how long did you did you twig? Did it occur to you that that was what was going on? The fact that it, that not was... at all. Oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> did it? Oh, were you hoping that it also caught me out, or were you hoping that you'd been smarter than me? Wait, no, it didn't catch me out. Is what I was saying. <laughs> the, oh, okay. When I when there's so. The, there's a, a the group of trouble girls. This is in the wild. We're talking about now. <laughs> oh the, yeah. The the girls are on a plane, and there is a thing called the Eve Project. I'm like, mm, okay, so the Eve Project. What the little that we hear about it is about women sort of rediscovering themselves and and sorting out their you know um, different issues and bits and pieces, and the fact that it's you know it's called the Eve Project. Eve sort of evoking you know. Um, the Garden of Eden, so the sort of the garden being an outside space. As they were on the plane, they saw that um, they were given the brochure. I was like, I think this might be the reason they're on this plane. I was like, this, this. Well, yeah, they're all project. going to the same place. Well, this is. I think That's the, generally how planes work. <laughs> but, <I was> like, <laughs> but no, it occurred to me that like, okay, so the Eve Project probably is. This is part of it. And then the crash is part of it. And then the whole thing is about them working together to survive on the island as a part of this 
you know, rehab therapy group that's been advertised to them. So it, it did occur it's to me that fucking might extreme. Be what's going on. <laughs> yes, it is. But I, I got to be completely honest, and I didn't expect it to go this way. I enjoyed the wilds a lot more than I enjoyed yellow jackets, which is oh. really, really odd. Because looking on paper. The two that obviously the yellow jackets lean slightly more into like the horror side of things, particularly, and we'll get onto this, particularly with that cast. Um, looking at it on paper, it absolutely should have been the one I preferred, but actually, I had a much better time with the wilds. Interesting because I would have expected that because of the two, I think I did prefer yellow jackets. But, like, there's no real disparity in how much I enjoyed them both. I was just sort of like, this is sick. We paired these up so well by accident. And and they both had, like... So the Wilds, for me, had more of a twist because, obviously, I didn't clock the whole mm. uh, Eve project thing. And I was just like, oh, shit, that's just really unlucky. These girls were on their way to, like, self-discovery retreat and then they just crashed their plane into an ocean well they didn't but the plane they were on crashed and then they start dying which seems to be like that's not part of the plan <laughs> <laughs> um what i did i guess is that they were like oh does anyone know cpr and like half of them are just like yeah i know cpr but then which it's- feels like a lot of people to then leave the person who doesn't know how to do CPR <laughs> performing CPR. Yeah, I think maybe that's the first test. One of them even makes the point, doesn't it? Isn't that weird that we all knew CPR, like we all knew what to do, apart from <laughs> apart from the person who was there. Like, you can't go too fast. <laughs> and it's just like, no, you can. And also, if you go too hard, you break them ribs. <laughs> Which for yellow jackets would be great because it's easier to get meat off. Uh, <laughs> this is what I'm starting to think is perhaps I need to re-watch Yellow Jackets because like there's a lot of sort of folk horror imagery like with the, the cover in their faces and the um, antlers I was going to say antenna but not antenna <laughs> antlers yeah I mean I think stuff. the impression I got from both of them is that they're stranded for varying lengths of time in very different environments like the mm. wilds is they're stranded on sort of like a deserty sort of island and in the wild, in the Yellow Jackets, they're stranded in what looks like Canada. Yeah. Um, Very sort of rural. But I think, Not or based on episode so. titles, the fact that this is called Day One, and somewhat ironically, Yellow Jackets is called Pilot, because they needed a better one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the wilds is going to be like a much shorter period of time whereas yeah. yellow jackets is like like over 18 months or something i think okay so i've just had a quick scan down the wilds goes to day 23 um it does skip some days because it's only uh 10 episodes so it, yeah it it does jump you know it will skip a day or two here here and there but um yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess, I mean, also, like, because I guess it's, we're using the, uh, I can't actually remember her name, uh, main character girl who's in the interrogation. Leah? Yes, that's it. Cool. Um, It seems like she's going to be used as our, like, way to jump back to the surviving. Well, I... Or her, at least her for season one, maybe. I wonder if it's actually going to be like each episode it concentrates on a different member of the group, like in a similar way to like the start of Haunting of Hill House, where you go after each sort of sibling to get their backstory and figure out, you know, what their overall relationship to oh, the house. But then I guess what they are. could do to make the season shorter, rather than giving you everyone, they only give you the ones that survive. So you don't get maybe you don't get to see the backstory of the characters that die. Mm. That w- yeah, that would be quite a cool way of doing it. Was there anyone in the group that stood out to you as like, yeah, I really like this character? Uh, weirdly, I quite liked Leah as a character. Mm-hmm. 
Even um, though she lied to, <laughs> she was a victim of statutory rape. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, apart from that, like that's because she seems like the most sort of not together, but the least like obvious stereotype character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, on that, one of my favourites was absolutely Shelby. Like, even though she's like her, her default solution to every problem, oh, it's okay, we'll just pray. Which I fundamentally think is problematic when you're trying to survive on an island. <laughs> I did really like her as well. That's the thing, there wasn't a character, there weren't characters that I actively disliked either. The the, the sporty, like the, the diving um I, I mean, she just much. seems like a bit of a cunt. Mm, that yeah, just seems a bit. But bit as nasty. we've established by being friends for nearly a decade, <laughs> you can that sort work. of thing can't get in the way. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, we'd have incredibly small social circles. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's quite a good mix, and I think it will lead to some quite good dynamics in the group, and then some deaths because Big they're either investigating the whole eve thing or uh something went very wrong which obviously obviously I mean, something's yeah, gone something wrong quite, but, well this is the thing though is it I, i'm not sure because now the only thing that we know for certain is that you absolutely cannot trust any given scenario or any given situation with this show because it's revealed that at least partially the events we're seeing are controlled by this this uh, this um program um so i, I i'm even now i'm i'm th- looking back and i'm thinking well are any of those girls are any of them plants Do, is any one of them well they said working? that there's one more but i was i sat there for like 20 minutes just being like boo wait sorry <laughs> Who been? i was like ah oh, prayer girl probably her <laughs> I think I might have missed that bit. There's what one more. So they, I think, when it pulls out and you go, "Oh fuck," or in your case, go, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, I think they say there's one more. Like. Insider. Yeah, there's one more insider, and the thing, what I like is that it's just, it's just traitor. <laughs> like someone in that group's a traitor, and I'm like, I need to figure out who because. Because well, it can't be Shelby. Shelby, she's one hundred percent faithful. So, <laughs> uh, that, was, that was good. I I appreciated that one. To be fair, who would have thought that coming out at the end of twenty twenty two that probably our favourite show <laughs> is a reality show set in Scotland about people lying to each other. <laughs> to be fair, it sounds like. It sounds right on them. I, I, I saw the as, as synopsis said, for it. I was yeah. like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is a bit of me. <laughs> yeah, I've got a feeling it's going to become a bit of a phenomenon, that show. I mean, it's, it, it, we're getting off track from Wilds and, and Yellow Jackets, but it's based on a, um, I think it's based on a Dutch show that's done really well, which I think in turn, it's based, that I keep hearing there's another style of show that's like this from Korea called The Genius. Which is apparently better than Traitors, so we we'll have to. Uh... Yeah, but it's got subtitles. Oh yeah, you don't like that foreign muck. Welcome to season eight. <laughs> ah, I was hoping we might be able to leave that in season seven. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, also, I like you... I quite like that you can't actually tell if you can trust any character because, I, in the context of the island, like Leah's son just didn't mention that. Like, oh, you know, there was a phone. I had a chance to ring out, but my non super thing can't be trusted, so. <laughs> and then it's it's weird, and it's almost like... It's a shame that, like, that's the only number she remembered. And then also, I don't know if this whole, like, girls don't put their crush's name in their phone, like, so they remember the number. I'm like, that sounds... Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit, but for the show very useful <laughs> yeah i mean it seems like a well, it's pl- vaguely plausible excuse yeah for her to have a random phone number memorized i mean yeah if if nothing else it is a, a, a plot device that helps them well 
Well, it, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't, but it does make me th- it does make me wonder why is that in there then? Because if it if it truly is something that you know she's she says. I didn't tell any of the others in the group because what would I say? I tried to ring my boyfriend and then got too stunned by the sound of his voice to speak. Like, yeah. The only th- I think <laughs> tell them that. <laughs> surely the only thing that it shows us is that she is capable of keeping a secret from the group when the knowledge of that secret is actually detrimental to them and could have saved them. So I think, you know, that's going to come back and bite her on the arse. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah it shows an interesting like because all the build-up is like obviously they're gonna like band together and all be like good good friends because they all get like oh where that one girl died <laughs> she liked pink that's all we know about that's her entire character is that she liked pink she really liked pink a lot and she had a phone and she was a plant so apart from like those three things <laughs> very much like a non-character almost saying well that, she's more like... of a plot device than a character for, for all the saying, oh, you know, they they gather around when she does, and they all go, eh, she liked pink. That's something I think is commendable about the show is that it doesn't descend in, into hysteria. Like they get on the island, and they very very quickly accept that that that's the problem that they're facing. Is okay, we're here. What can we do that's practical that's going to help get us out of this situation? And if not get us out of the situation, what's going to help us survive it? Because I think if you made this 10, 15 years ago, there's there's no way you're you're making this without w- at least one character just shrieking and crying and freaking out. But not a single character does that in this. They just get on with it, which is, I yeah. think is brilliant. I mean, luckily, we've got Jennifer Lawrence to thank for that because she was the first female action hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all of entertainment. That is what she has said. What? Oh, have you not heard about that? Oh, no. Um, oh, she was doing an interview, and she—I think it's something. She said something along the lines of like, "Oh, before me, there hadn't been like a big female lead in like a action film," and it was like, "Well, uh, I, right." So I, I take her point in that. I, been I know what she. But I know what she means, that that's not, <laughs> but it ain't what she said. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like Ellen Ripley and G.I. Jane. That I mean, the trouble is that you can reel them off so quickly. They are such a small pool of female-led like action films. I think what she meant is that of our generation, like she's the biggest. I guess. But it's not what she said, and the reaction to it has been pretty much as you'd expect. <laughs> well, hang on a minute. So fair, balance, considered, and you know, <laughs> I mean, obviously, and not racist. <laughs> yeah, obviously, no one suggested doing a male-led Hunger Games in retaliation. <laughs> um. Okay, so yeah, that's that's all I've got on on the wilds. I did really, really enjoy it. I yeah, it no, really, so did I. Really I'm cool. definitely going to keep watching it. My sister's been recommending this to me for about a year and a half, and I kept just being like, "It's on the list." <laughs> I think you still do- now just to annoy her, you just don't. You- now nah, I'm not going to bother with this one. <laughs> well, she doesn't listen to the podcast, so I'll just do it. <laughs> I'll just tell her that I'm not going to watch it and then like secretly just be like this is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um I I'm definitely going to say I'm going to watch more of this and then probably not. So <laughs> uh yellow jackets then. Well, very different premise. A group of girls are on a plane. <laughs> And it crashes. Tell me if you've heard this before. It is crazy, isn't it? That within, what, a year of each other, these shows came out? That is bonkers, uh, isn't it? Yeah, so they both came out, I think, November 2020 and then 2021. Yeah, no, I guess it's... But I get the feeling they're going to tell... It's all sort of that... Um, oh, what was it called? Land Lord of the Flies? Yes. It's all that sort of base, but the stuff around it is 
may not i'm not going to say what's going to make it more interesting because all of the fries is quite interesting it's like under the dome but with a better ending <laughs> and no, um, with <laughs> with no dome <laughs> well it's the same it's the same principle if like you put people into a bit of a lawless society that they will just go Descent. mental yeah whereas like a uh, under the domes pretty much the same thing but aliens but with a dome <laughs> And then aliens, for whatever fucking reason. Um, it's why I never finished watching the TV show, because I just went, oh, but aliens. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we've touched on it before. The cast for this is utterly incredible. Like, Christina Ritchie and Juliette Lewis, particularly, I was like, yeah, I really like, I really like the pair of them. Juliette Lewis hasn't really done a huge amount i don't think i don't feel like she's done loads recently but everything i've seen her in i've been like yeah she's she's fucking wicked like because she's in um the thing i saw her in first was natural born killers and from dust of dawn and then i realized she's in national lampoon's christmas vacation which i've started watching every year now <laughs> <laughs> which is wicked but yeah i i i don't understand why I don't like this more because it, like I said, it, it's got folk horror sort of imagery. There's the at very least the you know the implication of cannibalism, which I mean, I d- who I don't like really, th- I don't, I think it's maybe no, I, I know, more on the nose than maybe. I, I, I just don't know where I can't see where this one's gonna go, which is cool. The thing is, I also can't work out what <clears throat> my main the thing that I didn't enjoy about this as much is the the jumps between weren't as like clean. Like in because I watched them, I watched the wilds and then sat for twenty minutes trying to figure out what the fuck was going on, <laughs> and then put this on and was like, oh, this will be. And then I was like, oh, the plane crash! Like Jesus, this is basically the same show and then the flashbacks were very disjointed because you kept seeing bits of like the cannibalism and stuff or implied but pre obvious but then you got all of their like backstory and stuff as well i was like i just tell me one of the stories (laughs) (laughs) rather than essentially three stories well, I suppose now they won't bother with the day before. But I guess this was this is a much more scene setting one than the Wilds did. Yeah, I, I think it, th- this one sort of took its time a bit more before it got to the whole crash and smashy. Which I get is the the advantage that the Wilds has is that they were throwing a group of people together who don't have existing relationships with each other. Whereas with uh. You're throwing a whole like football team, sorry, soccer team, uh, out of a plane. Um, like you have to sort of show what the dynamics are like beforehand, yeah. So that you can, you've got a, a base, base level yeah. to compare compare them back to. Once they go batshit crazy and starting each other, I mean, there's quite a lot of unlikable parts to these characters as well i mean towards the end we have one who like is caring for someone who clearly is not being very nice to the person they're caring for and one of them just straight up gets a gun and is like yeah i've got to go and meet <laughs> see some people i don't i don't think any of the characters that survive are going to be nice like redeemable because like the shauna character seems to be like Like, they've sort of, like, put their life back together at the end. But also, I, it feels like a facade rather than a genuine person who's, like, gone through something horrific and put their life back together. Yeah. But then, obviously, as a man who hasn't gone through something horrific and put his life back together, I don't know if you, if you do get all the way back or if some of it's always going to be a facade. Mm. And also, they're actors, so... I mean, but it's weird because um, 
the actress who plays Shauna. Yeah. You recognise her, don't you? But you can't tell where from? Uh, Castle Rock and Two and a Half Men. Oh, there you go. Oh, Castle Rock. What I was going to yeah, say is that... Um, she plays um, uh, Thingy Torrance, doesn't she? Jackie Torrance? Yeah. Do they, do I they can't remember a character name. Do they call her Jackie like... Torrance? Because it's instead of Jack Torrance. I think so. But, um, yeah, I can't remember. I I watched the first I watched it ages ago. Oh, no. Molly Strand. But, um, no, it's weird because I just remember seeing her in Two and a Half Men and then seeing her start and then not seeing her in anything else. And then she just uh, turns up to do, like, spooky stuff. I'm like, okay, interesting career. <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm sure she's done a bunch of other stuff, but I just haven't seen it. I can hear a train going past. <laughs> yeah, I live, I live near a train. <laughs> Um, I do like that you know going into the, the the crash and the stuff where they land. I do like that you go in knowing that there are, there are certain tensions between you know when, when the guy they all just they decide to get rid of a certain player so they freeze her out of the game like we're not gonna give you the ball to show off your skills so you're gonna get dropped from the team or whatever and you see Shauna cheating with oh god what's her name uh, the boyfriend of one of the other. I mean, it doesn't matter. Guys. I think she, I think her friend that she sat next to on the plane is just going to straight up die. Yeah, I, I don't think she's going to. Is it Jackie? Is that it? Uh, I think so. I. It's the trouble with both shows is that I didn't really spend a lot of time trying to remember everyone's names. So I was just trying to keep up. Yeah, and and particularly where they're so similar, it's been quite tricky to just keep track of who's who from yeah. which show. <laughs> But it's, uh, yeah, no, it's interesting to see, like, who's doing what. And, like, the thing is, do you know what's the weirdest thing is? That them freezing and snapping that poor girl's, like, oh, yeah, shin out of her leg. It was nasty. Arguably saved her life. Unless she snuck aboard the plane. <gasps> well, I mean, to be fair, she might be invited anyway, because they're like, well... We've got you a ticket. <laughs> so get on the fucking plane. Yeah. Do you think um, the, the showing the sort of... the There's characters who are dressed in, like I said, like the weird folk horror stuff, so that their faces are completely covered and some of them have got masks and, you know, they've got a sort of this weird sort of, not uniform, but um, outfits. Do you think they are the girls or do you think they come across... Uh, I think on... One of the first ones you see has a yellow jacket thing across their chest, like a like one of the uniforms or something. One of them definitely is wearing Converse's. I remember that from like right at the start. And I wonder if there's going to be a sort of supernatural element that comes into it, which would be. I mean, it would keep me interested if you know the thought of perhaps it, you know. It does go down that route. Yeah, I I mean, there could be. The trouble is, it's so hard to know with, like, the little that you get to see of the stranding in the show. Because you get very small fragments of, like, what they've had to do to survive. Yeah. And the only... I mean, it could be a red herring that they're eating a person or it could be a, they're eating a red herring maybe <laughs> <laughs> imagine they're quite literally it is quite literally a red herring <laughs> yeah but yeah maybe that's just a misleading sequence of events to say like maybe um i have just i'm just looking down the cast list and i have figured out there is quite the giveaway as to whether or not anyone survives because most characters have two actors listed as playing them and one of them absolutely does not so i figure that one's not going to make it <laughs> but speaking of the the casting it is ridiculous how closely they've managed to make each person look like their older counterpart like yeah. it is ridiculous <clears throat> how well they've done that 
Yeah, and I think, weirdly, depending on how much they have to do, I think the younger actors are more going to be more important to telling the stranding story than the older actors who are having to tell the oh no but we survived story unless it turns out they're all still cannibals oh yeah going back if they're still they've still got the taste (laughs) they need to keep eating flesh yeah i mean that could be why adult misty got a big old rifle (laughs) <laughs> I've got to go season people and eat them. <laughs> I'm going to go take our friend to dinner. For dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, it's interesting as well. Like, it's... I, I will keep watching both of these shows. It's going to be tr- I think more probably more track. priority on the wilds, but Yellow Jackets is going to get done as well. So I think it's just it's going to be interesting. I also quite like that them leaving it on like a uh, cliffhanger. Feels like I'm underselling a plane crash. Well, I mean it's yeah. Oh, we don't know where it lands. Could land it on top of a cliff. I I figure it lands somewhere where there's trees and snow at some point. <laughs> because that narrows it down to like a quarter of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I think they're both gonna. They're both really good pilots. I think. Yeah, yeah, they they are good. I think I need to. I think I need to try Yellow Jackets again because I think perhaps I've gone into it thinking it was gonna be a certain show, and when it wasn't, I was like, mm, not sure about this one. So I think I might need to give it a second look before. What well, if you want? I'm think I'm probably gonna keep watching it so I can. Uh... Let me know if it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> that's literally the point of this podcast <laughs> yeah except we're both meant to do it except except I don't I'll, I'll go one further and I'll watch I, I generally with both of these nearly watch more than just the one episode yeah I was probably more inclined to carry on with Wilds but now speaking about Yellow Jackets I'm remembering like how good the soundtrack is and how good the casting is and stuff so I think I will that's the thing I think on a definitely on a surface level the Wilds feels more complete but i think there's something about yellow jackets that makes it feel like something that as you start talking about it and seeing what things you missed that other people spotted and stuff might yeah it might be like the perfect water cooler show where you're like oh we'll just have a quick chat and you're like oh fuck i didn't think of that or see that yeah i mean what's funny is we've gone this entire conversation about two shows that starts with a plane crash and people being stranded in you know extreme wilderness and everything and we've not once mentioned lost which is weird because that's surely the thing that this owes a debt to i mean obviously there's the lord of the flies element with yellow jackets for sure and it looks like that's going to start happening with wilds more so with yellow jackets i think but we've not once discussed that, that this is similar to lost uh well yeah i don't have i watched the first season of lost oh i watched it until they moved it from channel four to sky and then it was dead to me yeah um i guess that's because i don't lost is one of those things that i've just (laughs) forgotten about yeah i i never got into it myself and again like you said when i went to sky we didn't have sky when i was a kid so don't have sky now fuck's sake so (laughs) don't need sky now hey Um, that's all I got on the wild and yeah I mean yeah the main thing is just, I'm going to watch both of them like that's, that's what I say that's good they're both good nice cool alright what are we doing next we've got oh here we go I always say that my favourite shows that we cover are the ones that I know nothing about and here's two more Southlands and The Rookie I've got absolutely no idea what these are so I'm very much looking forward to watching these. Uh, I'm I've been recommended one or both of them. And by I think by who? All, like, is it a reputable source? Uh, fairly. Uh, uh, both sort of policey things. I think. Okay. Uh, the rookie, I think, is a Netflix one that keeps now being recommended to me. So maybe. 
Um, but yeah, no, yeah, that should be good. Yeah, well, looking forward to getting that one done. And hey, first episode of season eight done. Yeah, well done us. Season eight. Got through a whole one without saying the word cunt. Oh wait, oh, no, we didn't. Cunt. 